making decisions to adapt our lines for the future. We agreed on the fundamental shift in our deterrence and defence. We agreed to invite Finland and Sweden to join our lines. And we agreed on long-term support for Ukraine. We agreed NATO's new strategic concept. We agreed to step up uh, in the fight against climate change and to establish a new one billion uh, innovation fund. We agreed to invest more in NATO and to increase uh, NATO's uh, common funded budgets. And we agreed to deepen our relationships with some of the alliance's closest partners, not least in the Indo-Pacific. Our final uh, session at the Madrid summit focused on threats and challenges from the Middle East, North Africa and the Sahel. Insecurity in these regions has a direct impact on the security of all allies. And our new strategic concept identifies terrorism as one of the main threats to our security. Today, we reviewed our progress in the fight against terrorism in all its forms and manifestations. And we reconfirmed our commitment to continue the fight with determination and solidarity, including through intelligence sharing and support for our partners. NATO's training mission in Iraq is helping to prevent the return of uh, ISIS. For the first time, we have just agreed a defense capacity building package for Mauritania, helping to address border security, irregular migration and terrorism. We have also agreed additional capacity building support for Tunisia and to continue supporting jo jo Jordan. We also address the global food crisis, uh, which is a direct result of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The impact is severe, including on some of the world's most vulnerable people. Food prices are hitting record heights, and many countries depend on Ukraine for substantial wheat and other food imports. So allies discuss their efforts to mitigate the crisis and get grain out of Ukraine by land and on sea. We also addressed how Russia and China continue to seek political, economic and military gain across our southern neighborhood. Both Moscow and Beijing are using economic leverage, coercion and hybrid approaches to advance their interest in the region. So today, we discussed how to address this growing challenge, including with even more support for NATO's partners in the region. We face the most serious security situation in decades, but we are rising to the challenge with unity and resolve. The decisions you have taken in Madrid will ensure that our alliance continue to preserve preserve peace, prevent conflict, and protect our people and our values. Europe and North America standing together in NATO. Let me close by thanking Prime Minister Sanchez, the Spanish government, and the people of Madrid for hosting this historic summit. An excellent way to mark 40 years of Spain's membership in NATO. We will meet again for a NATO summit in Vilnius, Lithuania, next year. And with that, I'm ready to take your questions. <clears throat> we'll start with uh, CNBC. Secretary General Hadley Gamble with CNBC News. Can I ask you to respond directly to the comments we heard overnight from Russian President Vladimir Putin? He essentially suggested that Sweden and Finland joining the alliance would require some kind of response from the Russian government. He said that if there were NATO weapon systems placed in those two countries, that that would precipitate a direct response from his government. And could I also ask you to respond directly to him and when he says that at this point, Ukraine should surrender completely and all he wants is the Donbass region. 
Also, we decide today uh, to support Ukraine, to make sure that Ukraine uh, prevails as an independent sovereign state in Europe. And uh, President Putin's uh, brutal war uh, uh, against Ukraine is absolutely unacceptable. It's uh, causing a lot of uh, death damage uh, um, for the Ukrainian people, but uh, it also has uh, ramifications uh, uh, over the whole world, not, the, not least because of the increase in food prices. So it's uh, President Putin that should uh, withdraw its forces and end this war immediately by stopping attacking a democratic sovereign nation and causing so much suffering in Ukraine. When it comes to Finland and Sweden, Finland and Sweden are sovereign nations and they have the right to choose their own path and to join NATO. We have welcomed them into our alliance and we are of course prepared for any eventuality um, but at the same time, I think what we see now in Ukraine um, demonstrates that uh, 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 Russia is now fully focused on that uh, war uh, and, uh, and therefore also we have also taken note of the messages from Moscow actually uh, that uh, it doesn't change so much, uh, much that Finland and Sweden are joining the alliance. Well, they have communicated different messages from Moscow on that issue. Uh, the most important thing for us is that Finland and Sweden uh, will become members of uh, the alliance. We are there to protect all allies, and of course also Finland and Sweden, and we are prepared for all eventualities. Okay. We'll go to Swedish radio. Johan Andersson, Sveriges Radio. Uh, now you will apparently have another two member states, Sweden and Finland. Uh, what kind of challenges uh, will you have in terms of uh, unity? You have a lot of differences in way of these uh, groups of member states. We're talking about economics, politics, and military power. And the second question, if I may, when uh, will you sign the accession protocol? Thank you. <coughs> the political decision, uh, the real decision to invite uh, Finland and Sweden to join NATO was taken at this summit yesterday. Uh, so that decision has been taken. Uh, and. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, we will do the formal signing of the accession protocol on Tuesday uh, with the presence of the uh, Swedish and Finnish uh, foreign ministers. But, but the reality, the decision has uh, been decided already with the political decision by all the leaders uh, yesterday at this uh, Madrid summit. Uh, then I think on the question of unity, I think that sometimes it's easy to, in a way, confuse two very different things. Uh, NATO has never been uh, and will never uh, become a monolithic organization where 30 and soon 32 allies agree on every issue. We are 32 <laughs> different countries with different political parties in, in government and different culture, different history, different geography from both sides of the Atlantic. So you will, will always find differences. And for me, that's not a weakness. That's just an expression of... Um, the, the strength of NATO that we are democratic nations with a variety of different opinions on many issues. So if you define unity as a monolithic organization, we will never be that. But if you def define unity as something completely different, that, well, we are different, but we are able to unite and stand together on the core issues to protect and defend each other, then we have actually demonstrated unity and resolve at this summit as we have done for more than 70 years. Um, providing the security, preserving peace, preventing war, uh, and sending a clear message to any potential adversary that we are there to protect and defend all allies. And, and as long as that is credible, which is easy in NATO, then no ally will be attacked. Na NATO's main purpose is to prevent war by having credible deterrence. Okay, DPA. Hansgahase, German press agency, DPA. Uh, Secretary General, you said that leaders agreed to invest more in NATO and to increase common funding. Um, can you please tell us by what percentage NATO will increase its common funding budgets? And the second question, if I may, um, do you support the idea of bringing Western main battle tanks to Ukraine? Thank you. Um, we support the idea of bringing uh, uh, a lot of advanced uh, uh, equipment, including also Western modern equipment, uh, many different types of equipment. You have seen announcements 
uh, and uh, we, there was a new announcement at this summit. So, uh, and actually NATO now has a, a task to help uh, Ukraine uh, transition from old Soviet air equipment to uh, modern uh, NATO standard equ uh, equipment. Uh, and of course, we are not a list of uh, equipments we rule, rule out or exclude from, uh, from, from that. Uh, Ukraine needs a, a wide range of modern uh, heavy uh, NATO standard equipment, uh, and that's a message also from this, uh, this summit. Then, um, on common funding, uh, we, are, we are following up uh, on the decision we made in principle last year that we need to invest more together um, uh, because in a more dangerous world we need to strengthen what we do together uh, in NATO. And we have decided a trajectory for common funding up to 2030. The uh, specific figures uh, will be decided in the yearly or annual budgets. Uh, what I can say is that the agreement we have reached today represent, uh, represents a, a considerable significant increase in NATO's common funded budgets, uh, and that will enable us to invest more together in uh, pre-positioned equipment, in hardened shelters, in infrastructure, uh, and to ensure that uh, we can uh, plug and play uh, capabilities uh, together in NATO. Uh, also with more command and control, and also to more, provide more support to our partners, and also to have more exercises. So it is a significant, considerable increase in NATO's common funded budget, and an agreed trajectory towards uh, 2030. Okay. ABC. Thank you, Secretary General Esteban Villarejo from Spanish newspaper ABC. Uh, first of all, uh, could you give us more uh, impressions about the Spanish organization of the summit as a hosted nation? And secondly, could you clarify if NATO's position regarding Ceuta and Melilla, the, the two autonomous cities of Spain, has changed anything after the new strategic concept? Uh, above all, regarding to the Article 5. Thank you very much. The hosting by the Spanish government of this uh, summit has been perfect, impeccable, excellent. And uh, uh, all allies expressed their gratitude to Spain uh, for hosting us in Madrid, a uh, beautiful city, at the Royal Palace and at the Prado Museum, and then at this uh, uh, conference here where uh, all the facilities have been in place uh, and actually provided the, the best possible framework for a historic NATO summit. Uh, a summit that has taken uh, transformative decisions for our alliance. We have the new Madrid uh, NATO strategic concept and we have all the other uh, decisions. So, so we are extremely grateful to, to, uh, to the Spanish government, to Pedro Sánchez, uh, the Prime Minister, and, and the people of Madrid in the way uh, uh, you have hosted us. And also it, I think it demonstrates that Spain is really a highly valued and important NATO ally. And it's a very good way for Spain to, uh, to celebrate, to mark the uh, 40th anniversary of your membership. Um, on um, which territories um, NATO protects and South America, uh, well, NATO is there to protect uh, all allies against any threat. Um, uh, at the end of the day, it will always be a political decision to invoke Article uh, 5, uh, but rest assured, NATO is there to protect and defend all allies. Politico. Thanks very much. David Herzenhorn with Politico Europe. Uh, Secretary General, throughout the uh, summit and in the strategic concept, we hear echoes of the Cold War. But of course, the nuclear non-proliferation architecture has fallen away. We have unprecedented numbers of troops on the eastern flank, uh, a hot war, not a cold war in Ukraine. Has the world entered an era that is even more dangerous than the Cold War? And based on your discussions with leaders, do you have a sense that there's consensus and unity around what are the red lines that Russia must not cross to avoid a direct conflict with NATO? We live in a more dangerous world, uh, and we live in a more unpredictable world. And we live in a world where we have actually hot war going on in Europe uh, with uh, the large scale uh, military operations we haven't seen uh, in Europe since the Second World War. And of course, this is uh, imposing suffering on the Ukrainian people. And we see it every day. And we pay tribute to their courage, to their um, 
bravery, um, and we also conveyed that message to uh, President Zelensky when he addressed uh, the, the summit. Uh, at the same time, we also know that this can get worse, because if this becomes a full-scale war between Russia and NATO, then we we'll see suffering, damage, death, destruction uh, at a scale which is much, much worse than what we see in uh, Ukraine today. And therefore, NATO fundamentally has two tasks. One is to provide support to Ukraine. NATO and NATO allies provide uh, unprecedented support to Ukraine. We are stepping up. Uh, we agree the package at this summit. But we also have a, a, a core responsibility, of course, to prevent escalation beyond Ukraine. And that's the reason why NATO is not uh, part of the conflict on the ground. We support our uh, highly valued uh, partner, um, Ukraine, but we're not part of the conflict. And also why uh, we have so significantly increased our presence in the eastern part of the alliance with more than 40,000 troops under direct NATO command to remove any room for miscalculation, misunderstanding uh, in Moscow about uh, our readiness to protect every inch of NATO territory. And that's, that's NATO's core responsibility, to, 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 to make sure that there is no misunderstanding in the minds of any adversary that if they do anything like what Russia has done to, uh, to, to, to Georgia in 2008 or Ukraine now, that will trigger the full response from the whole alliance. And that's the main message. And, and, and that is credible. And that's the reason why we are preventing attack and preserving peace for NATO allies, close to one billion people. Uh, the last question will go to Deutsche Welle NPR. Hi, thank you. Terry Schultz with Deutsche Welle. Um, Mr. Secretary General, you said that allies had spoken about how to help mitigate food insecurity and, and the, the spreading of hunger, but what did they decide? Is, is this NATO's role, and what can you do? And could you also address these reports that the Russians have left, uh, for whatever reasons, Snake Island? Will this help free up uh, shipping routes? Thank you. Um. So NATO allies, also first of all, I think it's important that NATO allies meet uh, and, uh, uh, and coordinate and discuss and exchange uh, views and compare notes on the different efforts that NATO allies are involved in to try to get uh, more grain out of Ukraine, uh, to get food out of Ukraine. Um, uh, second, it's also important just to convey the message that contrary to what President Putin and actually also China and now are telling the world uh, through different disinformation campaigns that, that, that this food crisis is not caused by NATO sanctions. It's caused by President Putin's war. And the best way to end the food crisis is to end the war. And President Putin can end the war tomorrow uh, by redrawing his uh, forces. Um, then different allies are involved in different ways. Um, uh, Turkey plays a key role in trying to facilitate some kind of agreement. Um, also, Greece announced that they are ready to uh, make available ships to get uh, uh, grain out of uh, Ukraine. Uh, and other allies are involved in different diplomatic efforts to get some kind of agreement uh, to allow ships to sail uh, with food, wheat uh, 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 over the Black uh, Sea. Uh, then um, Lithuania. Uh, other countries uh, uh, also updated uh, us on their efforts to uh, Romania and other countries updated us on their efforts to expand the on land capacity uh, by uh, railway to uh, transport more uh, uh, food uh, on land. Uh, it's very hard to compensate fully what we can transport by ships, but on land is also a way, and, and several NATO allies are engaged in, in that. And of course, the, the most NATO's role is to protect and defend allies, uh, and to ensure and to create a space for them uh, to operate, and that's what we uh, do. Thank you very much. This concludes the last press conference uh, of the Secretary General for the summit. So the, you've heard from the uh, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg answering a few questions. We are expecting to hear from uh, Britain's Prime Minister Boris Johnson very shortly, so we will take you uh, to that as soon as he speaks. But let's just uh, sum up uh, some of the things that uh, Mr Stoltenberg was saying, describing the uh, NATO summit in Madrid as transformative, as he 
brought it to an end. He said, we face the most serious security situation in decades, but arising to the challenge with unity and resolve. Clearly, uh, support for Ukraine was uh, paramount in what he had to say there. Also talked about uh, Finland and Sweden joining NATO, and they will send their NATO uh, accession protocol next Tuesday. Um, clearly, he's a number of times said uh, the way to stop the war in Ukraine is for Vladimir Putin to pull out his troops. Uh, he mentioned pull out them all uh, tomorrow. Um, he also talked about NATO leaders uh, discussing how to address the growing challenge of Russia and China seeking, in his words, political, economic and military gain using economic leverage, coercion and hybrid approaches. Uh, so let's just uh, focus on uh, what he had to say about uh, Vladimir Putin uh, telling him to pull his troops out of Ukraine 